This is the world's largest and most powerful jet engine, the General Electric 90-115B. It's the width of a 737. You could fit six seats in an aisle inside of it. There are two on this Boeing 777 freighter, and each creates 115,000 pounds of thrust. And with Boeing test pilot Kerry Smith, we're going to go fly across the country without using a drop of petroleum. And this is what's going to get us there, biofuel, a blend of residual animal fats and plant oils, refined into a molecule that matches type A jet fuel. Boeing 069 Heavy and Boeing Tower, runway 32 left, full length, clear for takeoff. V1. Okay. Here's what's interesting. It actually has more energy in it per gallon than regular jet fuel, about three to four percent more energy, meaning this plane can fly that much further on a load of fuel. So the question is, does it fly any different? Nope, not at all. Just like just like any other jet airplane. So how did we go from generations of kerosene jet fuel to biofuel? Flashback nine years ago to this Boeing lab in Seattle. Any liquid going onto an airplane had to be tested here, working on converting algae, plants, and other biological mass, even garbage to wood waste. Aviation biofuel was just getting started, and this is where we first interviewed Jeannie Yu, helping lead Boeing's environmental strategy. We are also looking at halophytes, um, which is a salt marsh plant. Um, we've also looked at babasu nut and coconut oil. And the fact that you haven't even heard of some of these should be a good thing as biofuels can be sourced around the world locally without competing against food. Or former food like this industrial chicken frying oil. This is the first 100% biofuel flight on a commercial aircraft. Yu is on our historic flight, now director of technology integration and the eco demonstrator. So what we did was two things. We are validating that as a use for 100% biofuel, but we're also looking at the certification process for those fuels. It's about 12 step process today. We're trying to reduce that process to five, which opens the door and the gateway to more entrance into the biofuel um, application. And the price is dropping. Boeing says this load is about $5 a gallon. A few years ago, it was eight and higher. And since fuel is one of an airline's biggest expenses, it's hoped biofuels can help insulate carriers from wild price swings associated with petroleum. Biofuels will provide the airlines a, a great hedging strategy. Already biofuel blends are becoming a regular part of aviation, available at a number of airports with more coming. So you may find yourself on a biofuel powered flight and not even know. 50, 40, 30, 20, yeah. We are landing in Memphis, Tennessee, home of FedEx. It flies the same in the flight deck, which was great for the pilots. This was Earth Day. It's misty and rainy, but a chance to brief employees and engineering students about some of the environmental technologies on this 777 freighter. Also here, 11-year-old Holly Watson, the girl our plane is named after. FedEx names planes for employees' kids. You know what biofuel is? Yes, sir. What is biofuel? It's like plants and that sort of thing, kind of. Right. While you will never fly on FedEx as a passenger, the reality is, is this is one of the world's largest airlines. When you include planes made by McDonnell Douglas, which is now part of Boeing, it has more Boeing aircraft than any other airline. We are using and testing biofuels. David Cunningham leads FedEx Express. We've got a goal of 30 uh, by 30. In other words, 30% biofuels by 2030. We've had several firsts on this airplane, but this is a really big one for aviation. Uh, you know, we've flown a lot of uh, uh, biofuels at a, at a percentage blend, but this was 100%, and that's big. That's a first for commercial aviation. Doug Christensen manages the Eco Demonstrator program, but Eco doesn't end with biofuel. Some of the approaches, uh, some of the new uh, routings that they're using, all save, save fuel burn. Gemma is 230 okay. at 10,000. Those approaches to landing at an airport, a test to prove what they call constant flight path angle descent, which could also help keep your flight on time.
we all do the same flight path angle approach, it's easier on the engines because you set the engines, it's less fuel, um, and you could potentially get more airplanes in the same piece of sky because you know exactly how fast everybody's descending. 100. We are, in essence, flying in the future if today's breakthroughs become a routine part of flight. Now, one of the reasons why biofuel blends are limited to 50% is that engine seals and other parts are designed for and need exposure to paraffin, a natural part of petroleum. Boeing says the biofuel on our flight, some of it here, has that natural paraffin quality built in to a biofuel. So before this plane ever flew, it had, you know, hundreds of hours put on one of these engines and testing and everything else. So this may be the future right here. Okay, I got a scientific question for you. You flew from Memphis and back on biofuel. Right. Does it smell like broccoli or french fries? It smells like, it smells like jet fuel. Basically, jet fuel is kerosene. You tried it. What yeah. do you think it smells like? No, it, it, smell it like? smells like gas. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. smells like kerosene gas. Right, exactly. So it's, 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 it's synthesizing that molecule uh, in, getting the, in, in, in getting the energy out of it. And I'll hold it up again. Well, maybe I'll leave it there. Okay, all right. I was told by the producer, <laughs> don't move it. Don't move it. So, but, uh, yeah, so that's that's the idea to emulate it. We have, you know, uh, you know, there's green diesel. We did a flight with a percentage of green diesel a few years ago. So this is moving in this direction at a pretty good clip because in 2006 was kind of when all this aviation biofuel got started, and it has moved along pretty fast. When you think about it, that's not that long ago.